Welcome to the vlog. It seems like we've been doing this for a long time. So thoughts on the Olympia this weekend. Freaking shout out to Ryan Terry for killing it. Seabum won his fifth title, looked great. Hopefully next year, you know, maybe we'll go again. We'll go check it out. It actually got me wanting to compete. That happens every Olympia. Cool to watch. Kind of though got me thinking I got to get focused in on my goals. We're about two weeks out till race day and uh, definitely feeling a little bit under the weather. Um, I haven't been feeling great. I actually skipped a workout, just tried to, to get my body back, but I've just been feeling off. So just kind of uneasy about things. So today I have my workout. We're actually switching things up and going to a four day split. I'm um, kind of fearful of doing getting into some overtraining because I'm not used to this volume with the running and the lifting. So instead of the five day upper body strength, lower body strength, push, pull, leg split. I'm going upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body with a day in between. So Wednesday will be my day off and then Saturday, Sunday will also be a day off for running. So today's actually an upper body day. We're gonna head down there, stretch out, and then we also have a 35 minute run today. So that 35 minute run is gonna consist of a 15 minute warm up, which is kind of getting loose, 10 minutes building up to race pace, which is gonna be about 8.30, and then just a cool down. So nothing too crazy. We got our work cut out for us today. Let's go stretch out and lift. All right, first things first, we gotta see uh, what I am weighing right now. I do have shoes on, holding the camera, 214 pounds. Probably more like 210 pounds. Holding the camera, the camera's gotta be at least a pound. A little physique update. All of our programs with fitness culture, there's an aesthetic component. Like, I want people to be proud of the way they look. That's usually a byproduct of performance-driven programming as well. So we always have a performance goal, whether it is getting stronger, running faster, being more functional as an athlete, more explosive. So all of our programs are performance-driven first with an aesthetic component. And then also the third kind of thing I would say all of our programs have or consist of is the longevity factor, which means mobility, stretching, um, trying to deload weeks, making sure that we're not overtraining, and, and that's just being smart with everything that we do. So um, that being said, I'm interested, I've been focusing on so much performance, performance, performance. I wanna see how I'm doing from an aesthetic point of view, and this is gonna come down to a, a lot of nutrition, but let's see what I'm looking like. Feeling, well, skinny but I would say fairly lean. Obviously this is no pump. So as we go get a workout in, um, hopefully the carbs I've had this morning, which was a uh, banana sourdough toast. So not a ton, probably about 45 grams of carbs, but definitely have not been eating enough. I'm a chronic under eater. So that's one of the goals this week is to stay on top of, because a lot of, I think the run down and not being able to recover has to do with not eating enough. So I'm uh, feeling good about, you know, where I'm at body fat wise, but I'd like to keep some muscle. I feel like I'm a little bit flat. So maybe, maybe as we work out, it'll be, it'll be a little bit better, but being flat can also mean not having enough sodium, being a little bit dehydrated. So when you don't have a good pump during the workout, it's usually lack of sleep, lack of intensity, lack of nutrition, or lack of hydration slash sodium. So if you're having bad workouts, maybe start looking at one of those first. All right, upper body day, not gonna lie. Lower body is pretty beat up, so we're gonna be warming up. I always like to, to do something to just get heart rate elevated. Little jump rope. Oh, it's been a minute since I've done double unders. I do feel like jumping rope is probably one of the most underrated cardio activities. Just don't do it on the turf. Adding into these warm ups, always just my dead hang. Love a dead hang. How long do you dead hang for? That was two minutes. <laughs> two minutes is a long ass dead hang. Two minutes? So I have you beat too. She says yeah. she did 220. I did. I'm just, I would be really impressed to see it in person. <laughs> two minutes is a long ass time though. <sighs> 220, let's see what we got. I, I, I usually yeah. do a little bit of this. No, you got it thrown out. I like, I like just. A little scapular retraction action in there. And all you can do is a couple of hollow holds. Damn, not even a minute yet. Oh yeah. Oof. Shoulder health all around. I feel like hanging is one of the best things you do. Just you can feel all those little, where you're tight in your lats, rotator cuffs, just straightens you out. Med ball slams. Days. I'm gonna take 
typically pick two back exercises, two chest exercises, and superset them. After that, two exercises for shoulder, um, typically lateral raise, and then either a bent over T raise or a front raise. So I'll pick two out of those three, and then superset that actually with some arm exercises, and then we also have some abs. So just upper body day, focusing mainly on the, my weak areas, which are always gonna be chest and back, trying to get more thickness, which is gonna require me to start off with a row. So I'm just gonna go machines today. Little hammer strength thing I, I do love about the hammer strength machines is I feel like the range of motion is just always smooth. We're gonna be going 12 reps on this. If I go wide, I think target more of the upper back. I wanna get close grip, and I feel like my elbows again are just pulling in tight. I'm working more back thickness here, especially in that mid back area. So one. An incline hammersmith chest press. We all know we need more chest. If you're like me, I always wanna get wide on these. I like to actually bring my lower back off the pad. I just feel like this, a little bit too much anterior delt. So if I can kinda get set up off the pad, and then I can tuck those elbows. And from there, fuck, I get more of a true incline rather than more of like a shoulders at the first part of the movement. I'm just keeping my sets three sets of ten, but I'll go up and wait And my last set will just be one that I go to failure with good form I don't know if I got a little cold bug a little coronavirus. I don't know just fatiguing so fast muscular just fatiguing All right next up we got our Cable crossovers for pec coming down to a supinated squeeze here. I just get more better a little chest activation. And there's actually been studies done that show reverse bench. You get more chest activation, but I just always feel it. If I start out in this position and then end in that supinated position, I feel like I get a much better squeeze in the chest. So I have three sets here, 12 reps, super set with a behind the neck lat pull down. Less of a compound movement than what we did with our incline press. With back, I always try to get a, a pull down and a row. <laughs> a little behind the neck. I'll always go fairly wide when I go behind the neck. And then just try to keep a constant row. Like I'm not gonna try to swing and jerk. It'll be a little bit of a movement, but it won't be a ton of momentum. <laughs> Told you guys, once we got pumped up, it's not a great pump, a little dehydrated, but we're gonna go over to, the, over to this half natty lighting. We're just gonna compare it to that footage I got earlier. It's amazing what a chest pump and a little bit of a back pump would do. If we went ahead and pumped up the shoulders and arms, it'd look way better, but definitely feeling lean, but not full right now. And that fullness, I think, is just coming from not enough carbs, too much running, not enough hydration, not enough sodium. So we're gonna make an emphasis of getting electrolytes, getting hydration. My hardest thing right now, actually, is getting consistent sleep. I wake up in the middle of the night six, seven times, just tossing and turning. I don't know if it's my mattress, whatever that is, sleep has gotta be the utmost importance. I don't have a hard time going to sleep. I have a hard time staying asleep. So this is where we're at. Better than in the bathroom. out today thinking about one of the guys that got me into bodybuilding actually the guy that first coached me Craig Toth is his name otherwise aka armzilla here biggest arms of any natural bodybuilder I've ever seen like 21 inch arms just freaky he had a leg amputation a couple years ago and then had a bacterial infection that just he fought through and then ended up taking his life but it's crazy actually how like you can be super fit and you know something like that happens so I think that's why health isn't always what you can see and earlier on I was talking about you know like the three pillars, the aesthetic, the performance, and the actual health. Performance oftentimes includes some health and includes some aesthetics. I probably care less about aesthetics now than I did when I was competing, obviously. A little bit more about performance, but the health category has gone way up. Like I've, I'm so much more in tune now with mobility, with recovery, which right now, definitely feeling the effects of not being recovered. And then overall, blood markers, getting blood work done because that's gonna really tell the story of where you're at. Just kind of making me think about that as I'm not 
feeling 100% myself today, but, but seeing you know somebody who I looked up to, and it's like, nothing that they could have done about that necessarily. I don't care if you're 200 pounds overweight, if your blood markers are all good, and you know the doctor says you're healthy, great. But it's like, you, you might look great, but be a smoker, and your lungs are tore up, you know, cardiovascular system shot, that's not healthy either. So I think it's always a good idea to take a wellness approach from a 360 perspective. All right, it's not a bad, bad day's work for feeling like shit, to be honest. It's my job to make sure I do everything in my power to stay healthy. So right now, before this run, we're gonna go make sure we get some electrolytes, make sure we get food, and make sure we do some mobility before we get out there on, on that run. Hi, bud. I know you see me putting on my running shoes. We are rocking these, they're super cool. Bud, I'm running too far today. You can't run that far. You, you just have little legs. I feel like I'm a serious runner because I'm going with some loud ass heat on the feet, but we have the Saucony Speed Endorphins. Been my favorite running shoe, definitely wide. I'm, a, I'm like an 11, wearing an 11 and a half. What are these socks? These loud socks that these guys sent to me. PSRC, they're like a running brand out of England. Super cool, I like their supplement stuff too, or their, their roll-on creams. I'm just waiting for the Garmin to charge. In the meantime, I'm going to get some grub. We're bringing back the headband. These are actually Morgan's Oakley's, don't tell her. But they were sent to her and they're super dope. So we're gonna run in these. Not a super long run today, um, but I should probably start getting gel packs when I go on my longer runs, just cause it's just long enough to probably need them. But right now, just a little snack, banana, yogurt, little sodium stick, beef jerky. The last thing I'm getting before I go for my run is a little my little hydration electrolyte mix with some essential BCAAs and then some creatine monohydrate. Creatine is something I take year round no matter what my goal is. I try to take five grams five days a week. Not so much long distance as a different pathway, but we're in the gym, which as I'm training, um, definitely gonna help keep strength gains. And as long as you're drinking enough water, which I haven't been today, yeah, um, you shouldn't cramp, so. I'm also super, super tired of not being able to sauna and cold plunge. We're in a rental house right now, but as we get into building our house, we have super cool sauna and cold plunge coming. I'm gonna show it to you guys. This is the sauna that we're looking at getting. Um, we would probably use it outside, but covered under a covered like patio thing. But how sick is that? A nice cold plunge too. I just feel better if I can cold plunge. Hopefully, we get these soon, like in the next six months. I just always feel like my recovery is so much better if I can cold plunge. I feel more benefits from the cold plunge than I do the sauna, but I've never sauna consistently. I feel like the cold plunge effects are, are more like immediate. You feel recovered with the sauna. I think there's some really some cool long-term stuff. So I'm excited to have both of those things, hopefully to help aid with that recovery. Just, I'm so ready to get out of this place and start building. It's a little chilly out here, I'm not gonna lie. A little warm up though. All right, let's get going. Oh, guys, I don't like running. I'm not, I, I like, I don't mind sprinting. I don't mind even a 5K, but to run every day long miles, it's not me. But I'm doing this, A, I feel like it's challenging myself and I need a challenge right now. I need to feel like, hey, you can get through hard shit. It's gonna suck, but you can get through hard shit. And running alone on a path, I thought today was actually gonna be really nice. Turns out 75 degrees, when you run a bunch in it, it's pretty hot. So I'm hoping race day is gonna be about, I don't know, 50. But again, running sucks for me. But it's one of those things that I wanna be decent at and I wanna get better at. That's the name of the game for me, being bad at something, getting better at it. I know I've alluded to this or I've talked about it a lot, but. Coming back into the US, putting on things for on hold for a long time, businesses, gym, everything, social media. I feel like it's kind of, I just, it was on autopilot and you can't be putting shit on autopilot and expect to be happy with it. So everything in my life right now, it's in growth mode, it's in build mode. And one of the ways I'm trying to attack it is by getting mentally stronger. And that's doing th shit like this. Good morning. Hi. So tall. Imagine if you're this tall. It'd be awesome. I'd actually put him in the NBA on the NFL has a tight end. Um, golf you room. Make me look small and I'm not small. I mean, you're kind of small. I'm not small. I'm average. This is the golf room. All of Steven's shoes and my shoes. Golf clubs. Golf bags. Putting setup thing. Peloton. Steven is doing a Peloton workout this morning. Just getting an hour 
hour of work basically to flush out lactic acid in the legs, also to give the knees a break. So just jumping on the Peloton. It's been a while I'm paying for a Peloton subscription for way too long to not use this thing. So got an hour trying to keep heart rate right now. It's about 110. Just got on it. Would like to get to about 130. And just stay there for about an hour. Recovery ride. Just about halfway done with the ride. I'm trying to keep this between 130 and 150. The output heart rate between 130 and 140. Just kind of flush things out. Right now we're almost eight miles, almost 30 minutes into the ride. I got a full hour. All right, this is that time of the video that we go over last week's comments. Here goes nothing. Last week's video was us in Mexico. A lot of good comments on these. Uh, Steve been following for years. It's funny to find that we're both trying to do a half marathon while weight training. What program are you following for the half marathon? Um, I'm doing the heat program that's just modified with some more long distance runs. Just kind of following a, a training routine running wise that a friend who does some triathl triathlons and Ironmans um, does for his half marathon clients. Uh, my man, bringing back motivation in 2023, you'll feel less beat up on terrain. Road running is tough on the body, alcohol, dehydrating. Stay dry while you while you train and continue to sip on non-alcoholic beverages to keep tissue supple. All right. Also yoga, perfect way to stretch and strengthen without lifting heavy and building excess muscles. This is from Kelly Hogan. Um, strength training should be limited to dynamic movement that focuses on the core. I'm going to disagree with that a little bit. I think you still need to do some strength training throughout it. Otherwise, like you definitely don't need to be doing bodybuilding, but strength training. Pay attention to shoe-induced aches and pains and get your gait evaluated. I did all that. I'm loving my my Saucony Speed Endorphins, the ones I got there. I've never run on treadmills because they always slip and make me feel I'm like about to die. Treadmill running sucks. Honestly, doing that was a last resort in Mexico and it didn't work out well. Steve, where can we follow you for all your runs? I actually haven't been really logging them. I guess my Garmin tracks them, but I, I don't have Strava or anything. Steve telling me he was scubby makes me feel really bad. Scubby's the thing that is very subjective from person to person. Heck yeah, brother, keep after it. When's the clap with Nick Bear? Funny you should say that. Nick's podcast manager, I wanna say, reached out to me. Um, so we're gonna have to get down there and do a collab with him. Not sure when, I know he's got a race coming up, but I would love to get down there. Seems like a great guy. So yeah, that hopefully we could do that in the next three months or so, but thanks for continuing to watch these. Next week, we're gonna probably stick more to not just running, but also some bike workouts because the knee, the knee is banged up. It's just my right knee and I feel like I kind of overextend it on some of my runs. I don't know why. So it's just like my meniscus in the back of my knee end up hurting. So um, gonna have to pay attention to that, but I like what the what the bike is, is doing. So we'll probably do some more of that and then probably just a recovery week before we, we do our half, half marathon. So appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time.